This hourly segment is brought to you by Scott Tucker Solutions and his show, Retirement Decoded. Sunday mornings at 8. Learn more at scotttuckersolutions.com. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Good Tuesday morning. Amy Jacobson here. John Anthony in for Dan Croft, who's going to be back tomorrow from his fishing trip. And we'll just see whether or not he yeah. caught the big one when he was fishing with his man friends. He went on a mancation, don't you know? With his bros. Yes. And he's, uh, I'm sure he will be back and have a lot to say about the war in Israel. And we just wanted to keep you updated. According to WGN News, they said um, of the 100 plus hostages taken, more than 50 family members have been contacted so that they know um, that they're being held, obviously, against their will. But that's just an update on that front. Wow. All right. $14 billion to modernize what exactly? Let's start there with Mark Glennon. He's founder and executive editor of WirePoint, wirepoints.com. Good morning, Mr. Glennon. How are you? Amy John, thanks for having hey, me. Buddy. Very good. Yeah, so uh, a third of the Chicago public schools are are half empty, but the school wants to do exactly what? Yeah, renovate them, throw money at them, throw money at failing empty schools. Uh, Fourteen point four billion is fifty uh, percent more than the budget. I mean, this is of course in addition to the budget. These schools are already getting an astronomical, you know, nearly thirty thousand dollars per student, and uh, you know, a billion of this new infrastructure spending is targeted to go to the district's 20 most empty failing schools where only um, five to, to you know, the, the schools are only five to 25% full and just 8% of the students there can read at click grade level. So, you know, this is the <laughs> fine failure and throw money at it. That, I mean, that's, uh, that's what this is about. And it's so remarkable because we played, you know, a lot of number of CPS schools and my son played basketball for four years and we'd go to these schools where, they wouldn't have a freshman team. And I said, why? And he said, we only have 52 students. And, and that was an uplift. And I remember they had 50 teachers, but 52 students. So in, in a case like that, don't you just, isn't it more economically sound to shut that school down? You would think so. Yeah, Douglas High School, capacity for 900 students, just 34 kids are enrolled there. What? Uh, utilization rate. Yeah, yeah. You'd see about a four percent utilization rate. This is just madness. And uh, throw money at them. That's the answer. So when they say it's thirty k per student, you know, follow the money. What what do you get for thirty k per student? That's like a college tuition right there. Yeah, it, it sure is. I mean, that you know, that's that's of course off the charts by by national standards, by standards of many schools that are that are outperforming us. Um, and, uh, you know, why, why can't we just face up to the problem? This is a national problem. There's a lot of failing schools around the country. And, uh, you know, across Illinois, we have this problem in many schools. We have it in Chicago. Just acknowledge it and deal with it. Um, that's what the rest of the country is mostly doing. And uh, we can't have that admission here in Illinois, apparently. Yeah. Mark, I don't know if you – this is how Chicago has affected where I live, down in Joliet. Have you heard about the eight point six million grant that um, Joliet Township received from JB Pritzker? Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. Yeah. I House live in migrants. Joliet. I live in Joliet. Well, did you know? Was that a surprise to all of you? Well, we we didn't know that it that it went to the township uh, and not to the mayor's office. It went to the Joliet Township and not the mayor's. So the township bought a building for like four hundred fifty thousand dollars, and then now they're going to house people at this this center. I think it's called the Peter. Clever P- Peter Peter Claver Center, um, in J- Joliet Township. Um, uh, I mean, and there was no pushback. There's nothing that 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 the mayor of Joliet can do because uh, Joliet Township is his own autonomy. They they're elected, duly elected, and things of that nature. Are we going to start seeing more of that across the state of Illinois? Well, you know, we are seeing it. That that's a, that's a great point. The lack of transparency, and uh, you know, people in Joliet, of course, had no understanding of this. Had no chance to speak up at a, at a particular meeting or anything else. Um, you know, not too far away. You know, we have uh, the, the most insane thing in the world going on. Um, uh, eight 
$8 billion of taxpayer money being crammed down the throats of people in Mantino to build a, uh, a EV battery factor factory that it will only cost $2 billion wow. and will be owned by a company clearly linked to the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, that's one of their main complaints in Mantino. They're going nuts down there. They're livid is the lack of transparency. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, it's um, it, the lack of transparency in these things. Is uh, the, you don't have democracy if you don't have no. transparency. That's true. Mark Lennon, were you uh, of WirePoints, founder and executive editor of WirePoints.org, by the way, not .com, WirePoints.org. <laughs> Are you familiar, I mean, um, where the Garda World contract that was signed? Because in there, if you read the fine print, it says there's going to be tents built in Lake County, Cook County, DuPage County, Will County, McHenry County, and, yeah, Kane County. Yeah, not Kendall. Good. Not Ken- well. No, I don't. You know what? I, hey, I think hey, it might down. be Kendall County. Settle down now. But it's, there was talk of possibly putting tents up in the forest preserves because we have all these different groves out in Cook County. Have you heard anything about that? I have not dug into that uh, that contract yet, and uh, it, you know the, the the whole debate is just so silly because we're talking about the the fifteen thousand who were sent here. Uh, that are asylum seekers, but there's millions coming across the border. You know, no one share of that will be hundreds of thousands. Uh, you know, I listened to your earlier segment about uh, the, the asylum seekers and, you know, who's in that mix. We have some understanding of that. Those are the people that come across the border and turn themselves in, yeah. but not even counted are what are called the getaways. Yeah. And there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Millions. Those are the bad ones. They're, those are the ones that, uh, uh, you couldn't get asylum if they applied because they've got criminal records or they come from terrorist nations or whatever. We, you know, they're all over. And what, you know, what's it really costing us to to cover those people? This whole discussion of what we're doing with the fifteen thousand is uh, it's is eighteen just a thousand now. Bucket. Sorry for interrupt. It's eighteen thousand now. 18, now. And New York okay. has one hundred and thirty four thousand, and we are going to become New York. People don't understand. I keep telling them. We're getting uh, 25, they say 20 to 25 buses a day. That's 1,200 a day. Wow. And they're still coming across the border. It has not stopped. The flow of people coming has not stopped. So we are going to become New York. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. And, you know, that one thing that needs to be said firmly is do not trust the supposed movement by Pritzker and Biden on cracking down on the border. They threw out a few bones of language about that there's you know this, the dispute about whether um, some tiny part of the wall is going to be built or whatever but uh you know Pritzker went on national tv and said well this is kind of a negotiation thing we'll we'll um uh try to get comprehensive immigration reform out of this they're not serious about this unless and until you see the border enforced yep. don't believe anything that's I my think, point don't I believe think- anything I think that was more to protect Mayorkas from the impeachment inquiry that they want to uh, unleash on him. But, you know, Brandon Johnson, you guys have an article attached to wirepoints.org from WTTW uh, written by Heather Sharon. Brandon Johnson set to unveil spending gap designed to, listen to this, undo trauma and close the $538 million gap. What does it mean that government is going to undo trauma? Undo that sounds trauma. like you white people are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for the war- thanks for the warning. Um, well, you know we're we're to blame for the uh, border crisis too. Uh, you know, Brandon Johnson was very clear. Well, you know, what we're facing is a threat to democracy, and this is all just a big plan by by white supremacists. He said. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he expressly said that last week in a couple. I played of it on my show. I know. Uh, um, Yes, yeah, sorry, but you know, uh, uh, we, we white supremacists, I, I guess we're supposed to be, are not going to be able to fix the border. It's the people in power that got to do that. Uh, mm-hmm. I, it, 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 it's it's just theater of the abuse of the absurd on this. That's all right, angry. Mark Lennon, founder and executive editor of WirePoints. You can read all the articles at wirepoints.org. Always a pleasure to have you on, Mark. Thanks so much. Take care. Get the Thank gap. you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. 
Listen to podcast of Dan and Amy from the AM560 mobile app. Download it today at 560theanswer.com slash mobile. What if you could build a six-figure retirement income with almost half the money saved? You heard that right. Get a discount on your retirement, creating a six-figure income with 40% less than traditional 401ks and mutual funds. Hi, I'm Mitch Lyons, best-selling author and executive producer of a new Hollywood documentary called The Baby Boomer Dilemma. In this film, economists and Nobel Prize winning PhDs share a strange concept I call the retirement discount. It gives you more retirement income with the same dollar saved, and your money is never at risk if the market crashes. That's right. If the market crashes 30%, you lose nothing. Even people who are on track have shifted money to this new strategy because it increases their retirement income or can allow them to stop working years sooner. So if you are over 50 and want a bigger, better retirement with less money, call to get a free copy of this brand new movie, 1-800-578-3535. This is a $30 value, but when you call today, you get it completely free, plus two hours of bonus behind-the-scenes footage. No credit card required. Call right now. 1-800-578-3535. That's 1-800-578-3535. Again, 1-800-578-3535. All right. Are you tired of the heat and humidity, but more importantly, the musty, damp odor when you walk in your front door? Well, guess what? The air from your basement or crawl space will permeate up into your living space. Do you know the air in your home can be up to five times more polluted than the air outside? Permaseal can help with that. Their Permadry air filtration and dehumidification system is the way to go. It's, you know, much better than the store-bought portables, and it'll save you $189 a year and electricity costs. It dehumidifies and filtrates the air all in one. It controls humidity and cleans the air. And guess what? In the warmer months, dehumidifiers seriously help your AC run more efficiently. And in return, that 